Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by our own Frank Stample, who's going to give you the lowdown on the waiver wire for week two. What's happening, Frankie? Well, there's a lot of injuries to go over, specifically quarterback injuries, so we'll pay attention there, and you'll notice a theme on today's show. A lot of San Francisco 49ers as well. Let's jump in, Greg. Absolutely. Let's get right into it. Let's start at the quarterback spot. Last week, your guy was Josh Allen, who was awesome yesterday against the Giants. This week, who are we going with? Well, to be fair, I actually do like Josh Allen a lot in week three. So if you picked him up for last week or if you suffered an injury to Ben Roethlisberger or Drew Brees, I still do like Josh Allen against the Cincinnati Bengals in week three. But overall, we're going to go with Jimmy Garoppolo going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers in week three. Look, one week removed from uh, coming back from his ACL injury. He looked pretty good yesterday in week two. Threw for almost 300 yards, three touchdowns as well. And going up against this Pittsburgh Steelers defense that has allowed at least 300 passing yards and three touchdowns in each of their first two games. We just saw what Russell Wilson did in week two. And then in week one, we also saw Tom Brady pick apart the Steelers secondary. So I'm liking Jimmy Garoppolo in that matchup. I really like the way he looked in week two as well, throwing to Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and some of those running backs. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Jimmy G shows, especially in the play action, he's awesome finding some of those weapons uh, out of the weather, out of the backfield, or on the on the ends, the wide receivers, and certainly the tight end getting it done. Jimmy G's got the weapons now. Utilize the quarterback. You like San Francisco and the other pieces there. You gotta like the QB. And one of those other pieces include Raheem Mostert, who we tried to tell you about last week. Now, Frankie's buying in as well. Raheem Mostert splitting time with Matt Breida, with Jeff Wilson Jr. Why do you like Mostert? Well, Greg, you've been leading this charge for years now. <laughs> when it comes to Kyle Shanahan running backs, you need to own these players on your fantasy team. No matter where he's gone, no matter who he's had as his running backs, they have been viable for fantasy purposes, and we saw that yesterday with Matt Breida, Raheem Mostert, and Jeff Wilson all having value in Week 2 against the Cincinnati Bengals. But we're going to focus on Raheem Mostert today. He led the team in offensive snaps with 31. He led the team with 17 running back opportunities. That's carries plus targets. He also led the team in scrimmage yards with 151. Again, you just want pieces of the San Francisco 49ers backfield, whether it's Matt Breida, whether it's Raheem Mostert. I like those two guys a little bit more than Jeff Wilson, who was third on the team in snaps and touches as well. But Raheem Mostert, we're really focusing on him heading into week three because of his usage, leading the team in snaps. Matt Breida has been injury prone so far in his brief career. And Raheem Mostert has been really explosive on a per touch basis. Make sure you get Raheem Mostert on your teams. Kyle Shanahan running backs, man. They never let you down. Unless and until they get injured. Thank you, Tevin Coleman. Thank you. Raheem Mostert isn't the only running back that Frank's saying you have to pick up this week. Frank, who else do you like? Duke Johnson who? That's right. We're going to be adding Carlos Hyde this week. It's another Greggy guy. Who's basically stepped in as the Lamar Miller replacement here. He's going to be game flow dependent, but look at what he just did. 20 rushing attempts for 90 yards. Four and a half yards per pop so far on the year. 173 rushing yards for Carlos Hyde. 5.77 yards per carry. You know, I would say that it was a very curious move that the Houston Texans gave up a third round pick to acquire Duke Johnson and then basically not use him. Carlos Hyde, 20 carries in week two compared to Duke Johnson, six. But the Houston Texans don't have a GM right now. So I'm not surprised one bit. Lamar Miller, before going down with injury, was being drafted as an RB3 as a flex running back. I think Carlos Hyde steps in there. This is a really explosive offense. The offensive line leaves a lot to be desired. We were all basically writing Carlos Hyde off. We thought he was dead. You know what? What's dead may never die. Carlos Hyde is still here to play ball. Yards per carry looks good, and he's on a really good offense as well. So in games where they're leading, he's going to have value. He's in consideration as an RB3 as a high-end flex. Even though Carlos Hyde is no longer a Kyle Shanahan guy, He's still my guy. He got 20 carries yesterday for Houston in a close game, and the Texans are rarely going to blow teams out, which means Hyde is always going to be getting the workload. I like Carlos Hyde a lot, and you should too. Last week, every fantasy analyst tried to tell you, Miko Hardman, the numbers are going to go up. They're going to skyrocket without Tyreek Hill. And Hardman had a good game yesterday, but he wasn't the only Chiefs wide receiver to have a good game. Frank, tell us about Demarcus Robinson. Marcus Robinson so far has finished as the wide receiver one. Now, there's still a chance Odell Beckham can surpass him on Monday Night Football. But when it comes to Demarcus Robinson, look, this is back-to-back -back weeks that we've had a Chiefs wide receiver finish as the wide receiver one. Not a wide receiver one, the wide receiver one. And based on that upside, you have to own 
anybody that is involved in this passing attack. We just saw Demarcus Robinson's upside, six receptions, 172 yards, and two touchdowns on six targets as well. Pat Mahomes, we knew Pat Mahomes was amazing, but seriously, at least 378 yards and three touchdowns in each of the first two weeks. This is why we're saying you need exposure to this offense, whether it's McCole Hardman. Obviously, Sammy Watkins is already owned, but Demarcus Robinson only owned in 7% of leagues right now. So he's going to be out there, and you're going to want to spend some fab on him overall. But the snaps also went up in week two. That's what I really like here, Greg. He only played 43 snaps in week one. That went up to 68 in week two. He actually out-snapped Mecole Hardman in week two. You just want exposure to this Chiefs passing attack. Absolutely. Demarcus Robinson playing more snaps. And you know nobody throws the ball deep like the Kansas City Chiefs do. Patrick Mahomes has no problem always throwing it up, which means Demarcus Robinson's always going to have value. Get in on this offense. Pick up Demarcus Robinson. Frank, there's been no player that I'd link to you more this season or this offseason than Dante Pettis. And then he got hurt, and we still bought in. Maybe not as hard as we did earlier, but Dante Pettis was your guy. Is it fair to say he's not anymore? Well, Greg, I'm so excited that you brought up Dante Pettis, who put up a donut again yesterday, unless you count the 16 passing yards that he had. Yeah, it's, it's all right to drop Dante Pettis at this point. The one that you want to add is actually Debo Samuel, who looks like he might be stepping up as this team's wide receiver one. He led all 49ers pass catchers in week two in targets with seven, receptions with five, receiving yards with 87, and he scored a touchdown in the red zone as well. He only had 27 snaps in week two, which ranked behind Marquise Goodwin, ranked behind Dante Pettis, even ranked behind Richie James Jr. But this game got out of hand. You know, they were blowing the Cincinnati Bengals out late, so they probably didn't need Debo Samuel to play late into this game. Looks like he's already starting to develop a rapport with Jimmy Garoppolo. They use a very, very early pick in the NFL draft as well on Debo Samuel. So it looks like he's really starting to step into his own here and kind of emerge as this team's top wide receiver in week three, I mentioned it when we were talking about Jimmy Garoppolo. This team is going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is a defense that has been has allowed a lot of yards through the air so far. They've allowed exactly 300 or more passing yards or three touchdowns in each of their first two games. They're actually allowing the fifth most fantasy points to wide receivers so far this season. I'm looking at Debo Samuel as a wide receiver three heading into week three. Debo Samuel has been reliable for San Francisco and Jimmy G thus far. Even though Kyle Shanahan said going into week two, they had to pull back the snaps a little bit for Samuel, they didn't. They just kept pushing forward. It's clear he's past Dante Pettis on the death chart at this point, and you're right, Pettis is droppable for now, which makes Debo Samuel a starter in San Francisco and a solid flex play for you in fantasy football. One last player to get to, and that's at the tight end position. We're always looking for help, and maybe we didn't get the TJ Hawkinson or the Darren Waller, but Will Disley... Not, again, not a sexy name, but when he's healthy, he's gotten the job done pretty consistently for Russell Wilson. Are you buying Disley in the long run? I am buying Will Disley, mainly because he has the opportunity to score touchdowns, and if we're streaming tight ends, that's exactly what we're looking for, is a tight end that can score. He scored two touchdowns in the red zone in week two, going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, had five catches for 50 yards, had the two touchdowns, as I mentioned, and this is your annual Will Disley report, right? Your breakout. It looked like he was starting to break out last year, and then he got hurt as well. But based on his red zone usage, I understand the Seahawks are probably not going to throw the ball all that much, but opposing defenses are going to be trying to stop Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf and Chris Carson in the red zone. I think that Will Disley is going to surprise some people, especially in that area of the field. And as I mentioned, look, when, when you're streaming tight ends, you're just trying to find one that can score. I think based on Will Disley's usage so far, he's actually someone that you might be able to rely on on a weekly basis. Like I said, it's not going to make you excited to do it, and it's not going to stand out. Will Disley's serviceable, and at the tight end position, sometimes that's all you need. Go out and grab Will Disley. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up. Frank, good luck in your waivers this week, man. Thanks a lot. As I mentioned last week, we'll be doing a lot of those waivers together as we share a few teams. <laughs> good luck to everybody out there. And let's root against Nick Chubb tonight. For Frank Staffel, I'm Greg Sussman. Tomorrow, J.J. Zacharyson joins us to tell us whose stock is up and whose stock is falling. Have a great night. Enjoy Monday Night Football, and we'll see you tomorrow.